If you own a Kawasaki jet ski, this is critical information you need to know. As you guys know, here at KP, we want you guys to have an awesome season, fun filled, and no downtime. So, in the event that you guys do have issues on the water, specifically engine issues, we want to make sure you're prepared and you know what to do in that kind of circumstance. We know that the parts are not cheap, they're extremely expensive. Even our own parts are not cheap. But we want to give you guys the best of the best. A common failure on the Kawasaki Ultra 310s is the piston cracking issue. And that is the ringland right there. So here's the piece that came off right here. So you're going to ask, all right, why does Kawasaki still make these crappy pistons? Well, technically this is not Kawasaki's doing. It's actually not a bad piston. Yes, they did make a revision over the years and change to these pistons. The actual ringland on the top here is thicker than the bottom, which it used to be pretty much almost in the middle, if not a little bit higher. We'll do another video on that segment. This is not really about this. So why is the piston breaking and why is this ringland cracking? Well, the devil is in the details. So if you look closely, at the brake here, you can actually see it's not a clean, well, it was a clean brake, but it's kind of melted. So what that tells us is this piston was getting pretty hot. Now, obviously cast pistons are a little more brittle than say a forge piston. Now a forge piston is a lot softer, but it's more durable. So I guess you can say it's stronger in certain aspects. It'll take a beating before anything really happens to it. The cast piston, you could take a hammer to this and this thing will break apart in pieces. But it doesn't expand too much, which is great for emissions and great for a cold startup and terrible if there's, say, shock or detonation. As to why this might happen, pretty much from what we've concluded, it's either poor fuel or too aggressive of a tune, which pretty much can relate to both. For all you guys out there, if you have old fuel in your machine, either A, dump it out, or be very easy on the throttle. You don't want this happening to your machine. And yes, it could happen from old fuel. Fuel starts to turn after a couple weeks. So anything more than like three, four weeks, you're really gonna wanna start thinking about getting that fuel out or kinda being easy on the throttle on your machine. That's number one. Number two, which is the biggest thing we see on the Kawasaki Ultras, are guys not being able to get the appropriate fuel on the water or even on land and filling up with 89 octane or 87 octane fuel. I'm gonna tell you right now, don't do it. Like, really don't do it. You're gonna end up with a situation like this and it's gonna be, it's not gonna be a $500 repair, it's gonna be a $5,000 repair. So don't put crappy fuel in your jet ski. That's number one. So you know us, we recommend nothing shy of 91 octane for a stock machine. Kawasaki recommends 90. I get it, okay, if you have to, but just be easy on the top end. I wouldn't recommend doing full throttle. Even though they recommend it, just be easy on the top end. Do like three quarter throttle. You don't wanna have any issues. If you bring Octane Booster with you, okay, fine, no problem, but just be easy. 93, obviously, you're fine with. You could beat the crap out of the machine all day long with 93, and that's fine. So with this piston breaking like this, it's usually from crappy fuel or old fuel. The other reason might be a tune. You might be running a tune on top of using 90 octane fuel, which will totally do this as well. So here's my recommendation. Don't run crappy fuel, don't run old fuel, and try not to run a tune. If you really have to run a tune, only run 93. In retrospect, 
Run 93 anyway, you'll be pretty safe. I know it's hard to get on the water, but get it on land if you can and fill up your machine. Now, a lot of guys make this critical mistake when they have a failure such as this. We'll use this situation as an example. So you break a, a ring land, right? You blow all your oil out of the hull. It'll be black and sooty all over your hull. It'll be an absolute nightmare. You're not gonna be happy. That's your sign. Anytime you see like a, a blown uh, valve cover gasket, like oil squirting out of it, or it's ripped, or oil's blowing out, or you, let it, you have a lot of crankcase pressure, that's a, that's a piston problem. So if you start getting a lot of oil in your hull over time, more and more and more, that's a piston ring problem, and that's something that needs to be rectified because it's only gonna get worse. So engine blew up, it's out of the machine, what are you gonna do? Obviously, you don't want to spend a fortune, but you don't want to cheap out and put in an engine that's not going to last you nearly as long as it did before or at all. We see this all the time where guys have somebody build them a motor or they build themselves a motor and the machine totally craps out on them. It doesn't last. They get fed up and that's it. So we want to give you the information to properly build an engine so that it will last you just as long as if you purchase an engine from Kawasaki. And that's what you want. That's what we want for you. Piston exploded, right? So most, most guys, or most shops I should say, they will replace the cylinder, put new pistons in, take the head off, throw it back on and go. And I'm gonna tell you, that's not the way to do it at all. First off, if you ran out of oil and you were still riding, you might want to check your bottom end. Also, when you have detonation like this, especially this was the number one, the affected rod might have a lot of aluminum melted on the top of the rod and the bearing gets beat up from all the stress from the impact from the detonation. So word of advice, take the bottom end apart if this is your failure, just make sure, and since you're gonna be in there anyway, replace the bearings. Secondly, if you're going to be in the bottom end, check the oil pump. Take it apart. Make sure there's no scoring. That's it. Always replace the pressure relief valve with a brand new one when you're in the bottom end. That's hands down rule of thumb on this engine. Now we're going to talk about the cylinder head. Why should you not take a cylinder head off a blown up engine and just dump it on a new motor? You don't know that this cylinder head is in good shape until you test it. Obviously, valve lash is one thing, but how the valves are sealing in the head is the most crucial part of this entire system on the top end. If these valves are not sealing properly, and I mean perfectly, absolutely perfectly, this machine will either A, run like dog shit, or B, won't do the same full throttle it did before. So you're going to either A, blow it up again, or B, you're gonna lose significant amount of horsepower and compression, which go hand in hand, and it's not gonna be as reliable, and it's gonna run like crap. So we're gonna show you what a vacuum gauge is. You can see it here. Here's our vacuum gauge here. It's a two-stage vacuum pump, and what's it, what it's gonna do is we have valves in the head here. We're gonna suck on the exhaust port. The exhaust is usually the ones that get messed up, so we're going to do the exhaust for this exercise. So here we have two cut valves and two cut seats. And here are two originals from the number one piston that blew up. So we're going to show you what it should look like and what it shouldn't look like. So I'm just going to show you these valves. If you want to see what the detonation looks like, it's very gritty. It's white. That's what the detonation looks like. Okay. This valve is not, not pretty, but the face looks good. You can't see any signs of warpage. Okay. And I'm going to show you why you don't want to just throw this head together and go. Even if you just cut the valves and throw them in this head, it doesn't mean that you're going to have a perfect seal. And like I said, if you don't have a perfect seal, this engine is not going to last and it's going to have very minimal performance. 
So if you cut these valves and just throw them in the head without cutting the seats, this engine is going to run like crap and it's not going to be so reliable. And you don't want to put all that money into this thing if it's not going to run good and it's not going to be reliable. I'm telling you, the difference between doing this head up right versus not doing a good job is literally going to be 10 miles an hour and a lot of acceleration. So you want this thing to be perfect. If it's not perfect, this thing will not ever be a fast machine. Whatever you do here is going to set yourself up for an all out insane race machine. And that's what you want. When Kawasaki makes these in Japan from the factory, this is how they're going to be. They're perfect. And you want nothing but perfect on this machine. So this is the affected cylinder here. Let's turn our vacuum pump on. I have our hose on the port here. And look, we are 24 inches of mercury here. So this would run like absolute crap. You'd have very little performance. You would have a lot of unburned fuel. And maybe if you're lucky, about 110 PSI, 90 to 110 PSI. This would run like crap. So now we're going to take this off and we're going to put it on this side. And you can hear the vacuum pump sounds different. Oh, look at this. 30 inches of mercury. Do you know what that means? So if you do this up well and you got 30 inches, 30 inches, all these are pulling 30 inches. This thing is going to be absolutely insane. And that's what you want. You want a kick ass cylinder head. You want it done right. So you want to cut the valves and you want to cut the seats. And if you have to, which I had to do with these, you want to lap them just a little bit, just to get your 30 inches of mercury. You can get 25, 26, 27, 28. You want 30. That's what you want all around. And that's pretty much pure vacuum. Then you can assemble and shim this head uh, within spec. As well as doing those valves, you want to deck the head. Always want to deck the head. If you don't, the risk of head gasket failure is high. And if you're not replacing the cylinder, hone the cylinder and it must be diamond honed. It cannot, you cannot use a regular hone on Nicosil. So deck the head. Deck the cylinder, hone the cylinder with diamond. Millennium does it, we do it, Power Seal does it. Choose the best guys in the industry for the job. Hopefully this video helps you guys if you're ever put in this situation so that you have an easy experience and you know what to look for. And make sure if you do have a shop, do this work. Confirm with them. Make sure they show you that you're getting 30 inches of mercury on your cylinder head. That's why we build some of the best Kawasaki engines in the industry, because we pay attention to the fine details, just like they do in Japan. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Take a look at our website, kawiperformance.com. We always have awesome new products that we're adding on a regular basis. We're always doing a lot of R&D and we want to give you guys the best of the best. So stay tuned till the next episode.